KC Water is committed to ensuring the highest quality work and service to Kansas City. We are excited to welcome you to KC Water's Green Infrastructure Monitoring Training Session to prepare you to be a valuable member of the KC Water team. This training video is a comprehensive guide to conduct an infiltration test with a double ring infiltrometer. This test method describes the procedure for field measurement of the infiltration rate of water into soil using a double ring infiltrometer. The double ring infiltrometer method consists of multiple steps including driving the apparatus into the ground, partially filling the rings with water to initiate the test, using the Myriot tubes to maintain the water at a constant level, and measuring the drawdown. The volume of water added to the inner ring by the Myriot tube to maintain a constant level is equal to the volume of water that infiltrates the soil. The volume infiltrated during timed intervals is converted to an incremental infiltration velocity. This is usually expressed in inches per hour and plotted versus elapsed time. The average incremental infiltration velocity during testing is the infiltration rate. Today, we'll take you step-by-step -step through the standard operating procedure for the double ring infiltrometer. We'll go over equipment needed, installation procedure, and infiltration testing. Let's get started. Equipment needed. The double ring infiltrometer test requires the following equipment. Infiltrometer ring assembly, two rings, different diameters, 12 inch and 24 inch. Driving plate, wood board, two by four. Sledge hammer, level, connection tubing, two Myriot tubes, 3000 milliliter and 10,000 milliliter. Myriot tube height adjusters or wooden planks two garden spades, survey stakes, tape measure, infiltration ring cover, a piece of cardboard may be used, water tank or supply. The amount of water needed varies based on the infiltration rates of the tested soils. On a fast draining site, up to 100 gallons may be needed. Pump, hose, pistol grip hose nozzle, splash guard, soaker valve, stopwatch, recording log, and a writing utensil. To perform the double ring infiltrometer test, you must also utilize the following personal protective equipment or PPE. Safety vest, ear protection, safety glasses, gloves, steel-toed boots, hard hat. It takes a minimum of two people to complete testing at each site. A three-person team is ideal, particularly when testing rain gardens or other locations where the infiltration rate is anticipated to be high. One person manages water supply. One person refills rings and takes infiltration measurements. One person keeps time and records infiltration measurements. It is convenient to have two people take readings. One person at each Myriad tube when both inner and annular space measurements are being recorded. The installation procedure contains five steps. Step one, select a site. Step two, install the infiltration rings. Step three, install the Myriad tubes. Step four, fill the infiltration rings. And step five, calibrate the Myriad tubes. Step one, select a site. To begin the installation procedure, select and document a test site. If a test site has been predetermined, you'll need to measure the offsets to locate the correct placement. Identify a landmark and measure the offset distance to the north or south and to the east or west from the testing location. Record these measurements in the comments of the data log or as markups on site drawings. If testing a rain garden or bioretention cell, select the flattest area as possible that is generally free of large vegetation. To conduct the test, a minimum area of approximately four feet by six feet is needed. Step two, install the infiltration rings. Using the driving plate, two by four board and sledgehammer, drive the double ring assembly into the ground. Use evenly distributed blows with a large sledgehammer. Drive infiltration rings four to six inches deep. Record the depth driven. Total assembly height is 21 inches. 
Note, the infiltration rings can also be installed using a hydraulic jack on the bottom of a truck, if available. Infiltration rings should be installed level. Check infiltration rings for level periodically during driving and adjust to level if necessary. Pack the disturbed soil around the outer ring using a tamp or foot. Avoid or minimize disturbance to vegetation to the maximum extent possible. Failure to complete this step may obscure test results. This may yield a higher infiltration rate than the actual infiltration rate. Step 3. Install the Myriad Tubes Myriad tubes are used in this test to determine the water infiltration rate of the soil. The tubes measure water volume and function as a reservoir to maintain a constant head of water during testing. A valve at the base of the tube is used for draining water. The valve on top is used for filling the tube. Divisions marked in millimeters on the side of the aluminum tube show the flow rate through a site cutout. For this test, we will be using two Myriad tubes, a small Myriad tube with a 3,000 milliliter capacity and a large Myriad tube with a 10,000 milliliter capacity. To install the Myriad tubes, drive the tubes into the ground straight out from the associated tube ports on the infiltration rings. The small Myriad tube, 3,000 milliliter, should be directly in front of the tube port associated with the inner ring. The large Myriad tube, 10,000 milliliter, should be directly in front of the tube port associated with the annular space or the outside ring. The valve from the tube should be approximately one inch above the port elevation to start the test. If needed, use height adjusters to raise the Myriad tube to the appropriate elevations. The Myriad tubes may need to be inserted into a piece of PVC pipe to accomplish this. Connect the Myriad tubes to the appropriate tube port. Fill both the Myriad tubes with water to the top of the sight glass. Close the bottom valve and open the top valve on the Myriad tube. Fill the Myriad tubes through the vent tube openings affixed with rubber seal, allowing air to escape through the top valve. Use a pistol grip garden hose nozzle to control water pressure when filling Myriad tubes. Step 4. Fill the infiltration rings. Use splash guard or soaker valve to fill infiltration rings, minimizing disturbance to the soil. Fill both rings with liquid to a depth of approximately one inch above the ports, beginning with the annular space, then the inner ring. The depth of water in the infiltration rings is approximately four inches above the ground surface. Step five, calibrate the Myriad tubes. For the test to work, a constant liquid elevation needs to be maintained in the inner and outer rings. Close the top valve of the Myriad tube. Slowly open the bottom valve, allowing the liquid to drop in the sight glass. Monitor the elevation of liquid in the inner ring and annular space. As soon as the liquid level in the infiltration rings becomes constant, determine the liquid depth in the inner ring and the annular space to the nearest quarter inch using a ruler or tape measure. Record these depths. If the depths between the inner ring and annular space varies more than a quarter inch, raise the Myriad tube associated with the infiltration ring that has the lowest depth. If the liquid level in the infiltration ring is decreasing, raise the elevation of the associated Myriad tube. Likewise, if the liquid level in the infiltration ring is increasing, lower the elevation of the associated Myriad tube by tamping it further into the ground. Once the liquid level is held constant in both the inner ring and annular space, record the elevation of the liquid on the sight glass of the Myriad tubes and the time. Using the rubber marker, mark the starting elevation of the liquid on the sight glass. This constitutes the start of the test. When set up properly, the Myriad tube should maintain the liquid level at the desired head in both the inner ring and annular space throughout the test, preventing flow of liquid from one infiltration ring to the other. Note, it is anticipated that liquid will need to be added to the Myriad tubes during the test. Do not fill the unit while testing unless the bottom valve is completely closed. Close the bottom valve, open the top valve, and refill the Myriad tube using the pistol grip nozzle via the top valve opening.
Record the volume of liquid lost from the Marriott tubes during the time step. After refilling, close the top valve and open the bottom valve of the Marriott tubes to resume testing. The infiltration test contains four steps. Step six, conduct the test. Step seven, build records reporting. Step eight, calculations. Step nine, soil core samples. Step six, conduct the test. Measure the change in elevation of liquid level in the Marriott tube during each time interval by reading the site glass. This is the volume of liquid loss due to infiltration into the soil. Record data in intervals of approximately 10 minutes until a constant infiltration rate is obtained for up to six hours. A constant infiltration rate can be assumed when three or more readings are within roughly 10% of each other. At this point, testing is complete. For low permeability soils, readings may be measured at 15 minute intervals. For high permeability soils, five minute or shorter intervals may be necessary. If the Marriott tubes need to be refilled in under 10 minutes, take a measurement each time a refill is required. The manufacturer has provided a spreadsheet for the Turf Tech International IN10-W 12 and 24 inch infiltration rings, which allow for tracking of time and volume measurements. We have developed an abbreviated version for field data recording. Discard obtaining measurements from the annular space when infiltration rates are too high, i.e. less than three minutes per reading for inner ring or annular space. If infiltration rates are high and the measurements from the annular space are being abandoned, Use a garden hose to maintain a constant water level in the annular space and use the 10,000 milliliter Marriott tube for the inner ring. Step seven, field records reporting. Report the following information in the field records. Location of test site. Description of test site. Date of test. Start time of test. Weather conditions, i.e. sunny 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Names of technicians, depth of liquid in inner ring and annular space, incremental volume measurements for each time step and total time elapsed since start. Step eight, calculations. Convert the volume of liquid loss during each measured time interval into an incremental infiltration velocity for both the inner ring and annular space using the following equations. For the inner ring, Calculate as follows. Inner ring incremental infiltration velocity in centimeters per hour is equal to the volume of liquid used during the time interval to maintain constant head in the inner ring in cubic centimeters divided by the product of the internal area of the inner ring in square centimeters and the time interval in hours. Note, to convert from centimeters per hour to inches per hour, Divide the incremental infiltration velocity in centimeters per hour by 2.54, as 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. For annular space between rings, calculate as follows. Annular space incremental infiltration velocity in centimeters per hour is equal to the volume of liquid used during the time interval to maintain constant head in the inner ring in cubic centimeters divided by the product of the internal area of annular space in square centimeters and the time interval in hours. Remember, to convert from centimeters per hour to inches per hour, divide the incremental infiltration velocity in centimeters per hour by 2.54, as 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. Step nine, soil core samples. During the infiltration test, Collect a soil core sample within five feet of the testing site. Do not take a soil core sample within the diameter of the infiltrometer. If the soil core sample collected contains large voids, document and collect additional soil core samples until a competent sample is collected. Document the soil classification of the strata in the competent soil core sample. Take a photo of the soil core sample using a tape measure for reference depths. Document if multiple soil core samples were collected due to large void spaces. 
This information may help justify infiltration testing results. Training Overview That concludes the training for the infiltration test with a double ring infiltrometer. Today you learned how to perform an infiltration test with a double ring infiltrometer, including the equipment and steps required. Thank you for taking the time to participate in this training. You play a critical role in ensuring that KC Water remains committed to sustainability, safety, and quality service.